Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello, my name is Jessica and I make videos about the Walt Disney Company and whatever else exciting may be going on in my life at the time. It's great to have you here. All right, so if you'll recall a few weeks back, I made a video talking about Adam and my honeymoon on the Disney Dream, but I left out one pretty huge point of that story. And that is that during our cruise on the Disney Dream, we took the plunge and became Disney Vacation Club members. Adam and I had been talking and thinking about becoming DVC members for a really long time, and it just happened to work out on our cruise in kind of a magical and perfect way. I felt like a milestone as big as becoming DVC members deserved its own video, so that is what we're gonna dive into today. Before getting into the story portion of this video, I did think it was important to provide some context around what Disney Vacation Club is in case you're unfamiliar. So Disney Vacation Club is essentially a timeshare but it's handled a little differently than timeshares from my understanding. I transparently know nothing about timeshares outside of the realm of Disney Vacation Club, so I won't pretend to know the exact similarities and differences, but I know essentially it's a timeshare. When you buy into Disney Vacation Club, you are given an allotment of points annually that you choose at the time you buy in based on your family's vacation needs and desires, and you can always purchase more points at a later time. Then you use those points to book vacations as opposed to paying cash to book vacations. As an example, Adam and I get 150 points annually. This is currently the minimum amount of points that you can buy into DVC with. Let's say we wanna take a vacation at Disney's Riviera Resort in a tower studio, which is their smallest slash most economic room in September during the week, not on a weekend. Currently that vacation would be 10 points a night. So if we stayed Monday through Thursday in the month of September in that particular room that I mentioned, it would be a 40 point stay for our whole vacation. That means that we would have 110 points left to use throughout the rest of the calendar year. To take it a little further, let's say we didn't have any more time this year to go on vacation. That was the only time we could get off work and we're only gonna go on this one vacation this year. We could take those 110 points that are left over and bank them for the following year meaning that in 2023, we would have the 150 points from 2023 plus the 110 points that we had remaining from 2022. And so now we have a bigger pool of points to use on vacations in 2023. And that gives us flexibility to take either a longer vacation, more vacations, or get a more extravagant room. You can use your points directly at any Disney Vacation Club resort around the world, but outside of Disney Vacation Club resorts, you can also use your points for regular Disney resorts. So like if I wanted to, I could exchange my points for a stay at Fort Orleans, or I could use my points to go on a cruise, an Adventures by Disney vacation, or to just stay at a different hotel pretty much anywhere in the world. So in the event that we decide we want to take a vacation outside of a Disney destination, there are still a lot of options where we can use our points in that type of scenario also. Another kind of stipulation of the program is that you purchase your points at a home resort. Our home resort is the Riviera and Disney only sells membership at certain resorts at a certain time based on availability. All your home resort does is determine what your booking window is. So for us, we can book at Riviera sooner than we can book at Animal Kingdom Lodge or Grand Californian because the members that have those resorts as their home resorts get priority booking at their home locations. Disney Vacation Club membership also includes merchandise discounts, food discounts, and lots of special events. There are special member cruises, there's Moonlight Magic events, and there's also the special member lounges at Bay Lake Tower and in the Imagination Pavilion at Epcot. And those are some other reasons why we really wanted to become members at some point in our lives. But now that we have all the basics of what it means to be a DVC member out of the way, let's get into the story. So if you've ever been to a Disney park or resort, you've probably seen several not so discreet Disney Vacation Club booths. They're everywhere in all the parks, all the resorts. There's always at least one somewhere. And these booths are designed to educate people about Disney Vacation Club and entice them into taking a tour. So there are cast members at these booths that are there to answer questions that you may have about membership and their goal specifically is to get you to book a tour. As a child in the parks, I was always drawn to these booths because I was a pin trader and this was another cast member that you could engage with and trade pins with. So one day my grandma and I walked into one of these DVC booths somewhere in Walt Disney World. We ended up taking a DVC tour. I was probably 10 or 12. As pass holders who visited the parks frequently, we had done so many different, you know, attractions and activities throughout Walt Disney World. This was something we hadn't done before. So even just the experience of getting to do a DVC tour was kind of fun and exciting and we really enjoyed ourselves. You get to see all these awesome different room types that were much more luxurious than the types of rooms we were staying in at the time. 
and you get free ice cream at the end. And back in the day, you used to also get free fast passes. So it was a win all around. We had a really good time. It ended up not making financial sense at the time for my grandma, so we didn't end up becoming members, but it did make me very interested in Disney Vacation Club, and it made it a long-term dream and goal of mine from a very young age. Fast forward several years, it's now 2013. Adam and I have been together for about seven months, and we take a trip to Disney World for 10 days. We stayed at Pop Century for almost all of it. We stayed one night at Coronado Springs because we ended up extending the vacation at the very end. We did pretty much everything. We went to all four parks. We played mini golf. We went to Splitsville. We didn't do the water parks because it was early March and it was quite cold, but we really did so many activities throughout this trip. It was so magical to have a 10 day vacation at Walt Disney World because we didn't feel pressed for time. We felt like we had more than enough time to do everything we wanted to do. And so that led us to taking another DVC tour, Adam's first DVC tour. If I'm not mistaken, we were riding Surrey bikes at Boardwalk and we kind of stumbled into a conversation with the DVC cast member and ended up taking a tour. And I fell even more in love than I did when I was 12 because I distinctly remember we toured a Boardwalk villa and whichever type of room we toured, I don't distinctly remember, but there was this really awesome spa bathtub. And then on the wall next to the bathtub, there were shutters and you could open the shutters and then you could see the TV in the next room from the bathtub. And I just thought this was the most fabulous, wonderful, amazing thing that could possibly ever happen. I could come back from a long day in the parks, get a bath bomb from Basin, lounge in this spa tub and watch whatever on Disney TV in the middle of the most magical place on earth. It just sounded perfect and I was obsessed. But similarly to the issue we fell into when I was 10 or 12, it just wasn't financially viable at the time. Also, please keep in mind, I wasn't paying attention to the financial specifics when I did this tour with my grandma because I was a child. So I didn't really have a concept of what the financial element of this looked like. And this was really the first time that we looked at the numbers and had a real idea of what it would take for us to become DBZ members. However, we were college students, we were 19, and there was just no way that that was gonna work out for us at that time. So that was our first DBC tour as a couple. Over the course of the next eight years between 2013 and our honeymoon in 2021, we took the tour a couple more times at different points in our life when we were like, maybe we've done it. Maybe we have reached the place financially where we can do this because hey, we have established credit now and hey, we both have jobs. Yes, they're part-time, but we have jobs and just different things that may or may not have impacted the likelihood of us being able to do this. And it ended up not being viable at the times that we looked into it. We kind of set a goal that when we both were in stable full-time jobs, making adult money in a position that we planned to stay in for a while, that we would look into DVC again. We reached that goal of both being in stable full-time adult jobs when we were in the middle of planning our wedding. Adam got hired at the company we currently work at in May of 2021 and then I got hired in July and we were getting married a few months later. So it was certainly not the time to even be thinking about DVC. It wasn't even really on our radar at that moment because we were so wrapped up in planning the wedding and paying off our honeymoon and just doing all these things. So it wasn't really something that came to mind as a viable option at that exact moment. Then we get married, we have this wonderful wedding and we go on our honeymoon on the Disney dream. On day two of our cruise, Adam and I went to Disney Tunes trivia. And as soon as it was over, I was like, I have to go to the bathroom. So we walked out of the venue for Disney Tunes trivia and I found the closest bathroom and Adam was like, cool, I'll wait for you. I come out of the bathroom, Adam's not where I left him. I turn the corner and sure enough, there is a very non-discreet Disney Vacation Club booth positioned conveniently about 20 steps from the bathroom. <laughs> And Adam is standing at the DVC booth talking to the cast member that is working behind it. I didn't think anything of it at this point. Adam and I have always been really friendly with cast members, especially ones who kind of seem bored or like there's not much happening right then. So as people who have worked in slow locations before, I think we both try to engage cast members that look friendly when it seems like it's slow for them. And so he was in a conversation, but as I walked up and listened in, it was clear they were talking about DVC membership. He was like, yeah, I was just telling her, you know, that we had been on a few tours, but that it just hadn't really been the right timing. So we kind of just start talking about DVC a little bit, like very conversational. And then this dude walks up in like a polo shirt. He has his sunglasses. He's got a coffee, like very casual. And we were like, we don't want to take up your time. It seemed like there was another guest who was maybe interested in you know, looking into DVC. So we didn't want to waste her time if there was a potential sale there for her. And the guy goes, oh, it's okay. I'm a cast member. I'm on my break. And he was like, yeah, I was just coming by to visit this other cast member. Take your time. He's like, but I was kind of listening in. And we had been talking about how we were former cast members and kind of going through, you know, our Disney stories with this other cast member that was there. The guy that walked up in plain clothes was like, 
I mean, look, if you guys are interested, we can go crunch the numbers. He's like, I technically shouldn't be having this conversation not in costume, but you guys are former cast members. Like, if you're cool with it. No, we were like, yeah, we don't care. So we decided to go crunch the numbers with this man. So he took us to the cruise DVC office and it literally looks like a stateroom door, but it was painted blue and said Disney Vacation Club on it. He breezed over a lot of the stuff that we already knew and basically explained, hey, currently our minimum buy-in is 150 points, which sounded a lot more appealing to Adam and I. One thing about Disney Vacation Club that I didn't mention when I was going over the overview is that the points don't decrease in value. So owning 150 vacation points will have the same value now as it does 10 years from now. So more or less, if September suddenly becomes the most popular month of the year to go on vacation, they can change it and make September the highest point value month to go on vacation. But if they do that, they have to take away how many points it is from a different part of the year. So they would have to lower the point value for say, October or November. One of the issues Adam and I had kind of come across when looking into DVC previously, aside from the financial aspect of it that wasn't viable for us, was initially when we started looking into DVC, the buy-in point value was 50 points. And 50 points just didn't quite sound like enough for us to make it worth having this extra monthly payment and, and doing all of this. It just didn't seem worth it. When we started looking through the point charts and kind of doing the math, there are certain times of year where you could stay at Animal Kingdom Lodge for three weeks with 150 points, which is wild. Not that we would necessarily ever do that specifically, but okay, so if we time it right, we could take three weeks worth of vacations a year at different Disney locations, which is... A dream come true. So we went through the financial aspect of it, the 150 points sounded great, and the fact that in the future we can add on more points to our membership if we see that that's something we want to do. There were really good incentives for signing the documents while you were on the cruise ship, so we took the plunge and we became DVC members while we were on board. It seemed like a really great way to celebrate our new marriage to say, hey we've reached this goal and now we're gonna be DVC members as newlyweds, and as we move forward in our life together, as we start a family, like our vacations are secured, which is really important to both of us. It was honestly such a high though, the rest of the vacation. We couldn't wait until we got off the boat so we could tell our best friends because we tend to always go on vacations with them. And especially my best friend Holly and I are always like daydreaming about these really big extravagant hotels. We went to Disneyland right after our cruise and it always makes me a little sad that I don't have a discount at Disneyland because I'm so used to using my annual pass discount at home. And so now I was like, DVC discount and that was great and helped us a lot while we were in Disneyland and just going through the website and seeing what vacations we could take with our points. It was just such a good time and really exciting. At this point we have booked our first DVC stay. I can't say where yet because it's a surprise for Adam's birthday but in July we will be staying somewhere we've never stayed before with our DVC points and I absolutely can't wait. It's gonna be a really fun stay. It's a big bucket list trip and I can't wait to share more about it as we get closer and after it happens, but it was really exciting to use our DVC points to book it. And I'm really looking forward to all the magical vacations we'll get to take in the future with our DVC membership. So that is the story of how we became DVC members in the middle of the ocean. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up for me. If you're already a DVC member, let me know in the comments what your home resort is and what your favorite place to stay is. And for more magical Disney and life content, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching and I will see y'all next Saturday. Bye.